This is the September 22nd, 2014 meeting of the Administrations and Public Works Committee. Um, we do have a quorum. Um, is, could I get a motion for the approval of the minutes of the September 8th meeting? It's been moved and seconded. Are there any additions, corrections, or deletions? Hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. Okay. Um, items for consideration, um, beginning with A1, City of Evanston's payroll through September 7th, 2014, uh, $2,703,381.43. $703, Move approval. Um, I'm going to go ahead to the bills and then we'll do them all together. Uh, City of Evanston bills September 23rd through September 23rd, 2014 in the amount of $2,601,855.09. Okay. Um, everybody had a chance to look at the, okay. Alderman Rain, you have a question? Chair, the yes, question sir. I asked about the Darrow project, mm -hmm. um, 77000 for uh, a rehab contribution, mm -hmm. I, I just, what I wanted to know on that is, you know, what was the value of the house? And are we, I, I mean, is it better in some cases to knock houses down and build new ones? I, I just... And I still can't understand quite what this is. Let's see. We pay, okay, there's a $143,000 loan. I mean, I, what is the value of the house? I mean, that I don't think we ever got. I think that Ms. Flack can answer that for us. Good. Good evening. Um, Sarah Flax, Housing and Grants Administrator. I apologize, the, the appraised value at the time when we purchased it uh, or when it was purchased is in the neighborhood of that 77,000. Actually, we get it slightly under appraised value wherever possible. But it was thoroughly assessed for structural um, soundness uh, prior to um, purchase. It's a very small house, even though it is a three bedroom. Um, and it is um, on a very small lot. It is, if it were torn down, it would, we would not be able to rebuild on that same lot. It is non-conforming, oh, right. so it gives us the ability to have an affordable home. Right. I, that, I didn't realize it was okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? It's been moved and second. All in favor? Any opposed? All right. So, Alderman um, Burris? I ask that you move approval of A3.1, approval of a contract with Schroeder and Schroeder Incorporated for the 2014 Alley Paving Project in the amount of $176,738 for the alley north of Leonard Place and east of Wesley Avenue. Funding is provided by the Special Assessment Fund. Second. It's been moved and second. Are there any questions? Not all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Alderman Rainey. Um, next is A2, uh, A32, uh -huh. Madam Chair. Um, approval of a contract with Lakota Group for professional consulting for the park system evaluation. Um, I move approval. This is at a total cost of uh, $244,144. Okay. Um, but I want to ask a question. Yeah, me too. I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure if our staff received the letter. We well, that's what I was going to ask about. Yeah. Did you receive a copy of the letter from um, architect Mike Basilko challenging this? Um, perhaps could could we get the letter to staff to take a look at? I thought he had yeah. some excellent points. Uh, I know it's on my email. Um, I can can, you, send can it? you forward it to Wally? Um, it did have some points, and I was going to ask the same thing because we didn't get it until this afternoon. But it did have some good point. I mean, had some good questions. Okay. So let's move. Let's hold this. Let's hold it. And let's. 
Okay, uh, Jane is going to send it to you. Okay, very good. And, and we'll, we'll hold this, and then um, we'll bring it back. Bring it back. If you read it by the end of the meeting. We can. Read very good. Do yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. So moving on to a three point three. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move A3.3, which is our approval of a single source purchase of Davis Streetscape Furniture from Landscape Forms in the amount of $51,900, which follows our approval of the design concept for Davis Street. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any questions, comments? Not. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, A3.4, approval of the agreement with Harris Computer Systems for migration of the Aquis database from Article to Microsoft, SQL, in the amount of $31,500. Any questions, comments? Um, Alderman Rainey. Is, this is just taking all of the accounts and moving it. Is that correct? All the accounts and moving it into right. this system. I think so, but um, Mr. Lyons will answer. Good evening, Chairman Holmes, members of the committee, Marty Lyons, Assistant City Manager. <coughs> yes, this is uh, moving from uh, an Oracle platform, which is what we did with the accounting system and also Excella. So this is getting all of the major systems onto this, I would call it smaller, more efficient platform uh, that requires. Uh, less overall um, costs long term. So while we don't like to have this upfront cost, uh, this will help us uh, stay on one platform. Means we don't have to have another programmer or a, a systems administrator that understands Oracle. Um, we can move forward with a, a, a uniform back office in the IT department. And for anything more technical than that, Jose Calderon <laughs> is here to answer. You're out. <laughs> Well, it didn't sound that technical. I mean, it sounds mm -hmm. like that's what it is, just moving all of the yes. one from the other. Yeah. And it, uh, long term, if we have, uh, so Aquas is now um, six years old. We bought Aquas the day I got here. So uh, it's now six years old. If we ever choose to unify something where that's a, the, that billing system um, goes on to the accounting system, we didn't like New World's water billing system, so that's not something we're going to do in the near future. But it uh, gives us some flexibility, and a replacement also might uh, not have the same price tag because it's a, a less expensive operating system. Great. Thank you. Anything else? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. I ask you move A3.5, approval of the contract with National Power Rotting Corporation for 2014 manhole lining in the amount of $133,600. Funding is provided by the sewer fund. Second. It's been moved and second. Any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, next, uh, Madam Chair, is A3.6. Uh, we're gonna request that the council approve a contract with standard equipment Company for Emergency Repair of Sewer Cleaning Vehicle 956, the amount of $39,518.62. Second. It's been moved and second. I don't see no lights. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> Madam Chair, if I may, A3.7 is approval of the 2014 uh, CIPP sewer rehabilitation contract B with in situ form technologies in the amount of $130,551. From the sewer fund, sorry, the total amount is $230,584. Excuse me. That's like okay, it's been moved and second. Are there any questions? Comments. All right. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? This okay. is a perfect one for you, Dolores. Yeah. <laughs> Change order? Uh, uh, A4. 
Approval of change order number one with the Urban Works for Comprehensive Signage Design Program, RFP 12-41. Uh, the change order will increase the amount, contract amount of $19,720 from $52,270 to $71,990. Second. That we have a sample in the Aldermanic Library. I wonder if it made sen makes sense to bring it out for tonight to take a look and maybe prop it against the uh, the front of the. I think that would be Is great. Is it premature? I, no, I don't think so. Um, we had it um, at our ward meeting on Thursday night. There you go. And we had it at Economic Development last uh, Wednesday, I believe it was. So. Yeah, we'll bring it, Jonathan, we'll get it. Bring out the sample sign. Yes, so we'll bring it out so that people at home can can see it. Bigger than the current ones. Well, it just is a sample. I think just up close, it just seems so big. <laughs> Needs to be visible from yeah. half a mile away. Do you want to, Mr. Williams can sell, if we could put it yes, right sir. up front. And, yeah. <laughs> Make sure we get it. Great. Thank you, sir. Great. So we're excited to have this. <laughs> and Madam Chair, members of the committee, uh, I, I don't know. I apologize being out of the room. That's um, right. Mr. Voss did an outstanding job of working with Absolutely. the consultant um, to get a change order that made sense. So I want to thank him publicly for his good work as the first change order did not make sense. So I wanted to thank him for that. Fantastic. Yeah, thank Mr. you. Mr. Voss. Thank you for getting it done, Mr. Voss. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely, Jonathan, and we thank you too. It's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. I move a. A5, approval of School District 65 Rock Salt Agreement for the sale of rock salt in the amount of $92.95 per ton for the period November 15th, 2014 to April 15th, 2015. And I'm sorry that we're talking about rock salt. <laughs> <laughs> it's been moved and second. All in favor? I'm also going to move A6, approval of School District 202 Rock Salt Agreement for the sale of rock salt in the amount of $92.95 per ton for the period November 15th, 2014 to April 15th, 2015. Okay. Both A5 and A6 have been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. A7, Resolution 67R14. Um, <clears throat> Madam Chair, this uh, authorizes the fulfillment of terms of the gigabyte grant previously awarded to the city from the state of Illinois and selection of an ISP and network operator. Um, we want to authorize the city manager to further negotiate and execute two agreements with onshore networks um, for the deployment of the Illinois Gigabyte Communities Challenge Grant. Okay. okay, it's been moved and second. Are there any questions, comments on this? Maybe in terms of, you know, from based upon what we talked about, the economic development. Go ahead. I'm just wondering if staff could give us a little explanation so the community will we'll know what, what's going on with it. I think it's a great opportunity to understand because uh, we talked about gigabits and not really knowing what they were and how this was going to happen mm -hmm. what it meant but now we understand how this plays out yes kind of good interesting. evening madam chair committee members jose calderon it division uh, manager uh, so what we're doing is we're targeting uh, or essentially trying to create a technology corridor on chicago avenue in maine right now we're targeting three buildings that are listed in the memo um, uh, 737 Chicago Avenue, 900 or 900 Main, 737 Chicago, and 515 Main. Uh, leveraging the city's existing fiber network, we're going to extend that fiber and uh, bring that connectivity to those three buildings. And we're looking to bring residential and commercial connectivity to the units. Yeah, I was going to say. And the O'Donnell property as well, yes. The, the, I was going to say because that sorry. was a big discussion on Wednesday yes. night for us. At, uh, with, is it 825? can't remember the exact address, but... The, the Madam the, Chair, members of the committee, the uh, the building at Maine in Chicago, right. uh, what we'll do is we'll have a stub, is that yep. mm -hmm. a great technical term, I guess, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, that will be available. So this project will move forward uh, prior to that building being completed, but at that such time the building is completed, they will have easy access uh, for that. So that's built into the agreement uh, that we'll be negotiating. Okay, thank you. Alderman Grover. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Calderon, can you help us understand how we came to onshore networks as our, our operator for this? Well, we originally reached out to uh, the bigger vendors. We reached out to Comcast and AT&T. It kind of gave them the scope of the project. Uh, there were some concerns on their part as far as reaching the objective of 1,000 users uh, with kind of the, the small segment that we're targeting. And when I say small, to them being small to us, this is you know, a pilot program and a big program. But um, you know, kind of the 1,000 users isn't really a big enough piece of the pie for them. So uh, reaching out to Onshore Networks was able to brainstorm, discuss kind of different options with the, uh, with, with the project, and we're able to come up with a pretty feasible business plan. Okay. Any other questions, comments? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, great. Who had that? Um, I'm sorry, I forgot where we were. Uh, A8. Is that me? Okay. I think it's my turn. Oh, I, oh, okay. Madam Chair, I move resolution 71R14, <coughs> authorizing an intergovernmental agreement with the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District for the Civic Center parking lot reconstruction. This will be a green project with bioswales and permeable pavement uh, provided by a $750,000 grant from the MWRD and $500,000 from our parking fund. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing no lights, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Um, A9 is a resolution 40, I mean 72-R-14, the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Cities Initiative, a sustainable multiple, uh, municipal water management scorecard. And we have a presentation, I believe. So before we move that, why don't we get to that first, and then we'll go ahead. Alderman Holmes, yes. members of the committee. My name is Laura Biggs. I'm the superintendent of construction for the utilities department. And I am here tonight to talk about our sustainable municipal water management scorecard. So the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Cities Initiative is a coalition of 113 member communities in Canada and the United States whose mission is to promote the protection of the Great Lakes. And Evanston's been a member of this organization since 2007. The Evanston Sustainable Municipal Water Management Scorecard, this is an initiative of this organization, and it's a framework that allows municipalities to evaluate their operations related to water and storm water and, and wastewater. And it can really highlight strengths that you have, but it can also help you, um, as a tool, find out where your weaknesses are. So, these are listed up here. There's um, six major principles in the scorecard, and under these principles, there's 25 milestones that you can evaluate yourself against. So this is Evanston's Sustainable Water Scorecard, and I realize that the text is quite small, but this appears on page 186 of the packet, if you want to see it in detail. Um, here along the side are the six principles, and these are the 25 milestones. And I think the takeaway from this slide as you look at it is that there is a whole lot of green. Um, a lot of the milestones are green, which indicate that we are doing very well. There are a few yellow indicators, which are places where we are um, needing improvement, but we have a plan in place and we are making progress. There are a couple of red indicators down towards the bottom. These are locations where we don't really have a plan in place yet for what to do. And there's some gray kind of in the middle, and these three milestones are things that are addressed by a partner agency, Metropolitan Water Reclamation District, and are really sort of outside Evanston's control. So I'd like to go through and do a few highlights from each of the principles. Our first one is water conservation and efficiency. And when the council adopted the water conservation efficiency plan in 2012, we really got a head start on this. Uh, that's made us do very well as we evaluated ourselves. The utilities department also started a very rigorous leak detection program in the middle of last year, which has helped us identify a number of leaks. We have um, some challenges in this area, and the most significant one is in our setting the true cost price of water to our residents. We really don't charge that. We use bond financing for our capital improvement program, which is okay. 
Um, the level that we do it at now is okay for now. It's not a sustainable level, but we actually have a number of plans in place to address that and reduce our bond financing over the years. So it's something that we're making progress on. I would expect this indicator to improve. The second principle, shared water stewardship. Uh, we do very well in this. We have engaged and active residents. One of the things that we're doing as we move forward is to take all of our water and stormwater pu public outreach and initiatives and try to integrate them more holistically into all the other city initiatives that are going on, such as the Evanston Livability Plan. Principle three is shoreline and waterways restoration. Evanston has three natural bodies of water the north branch of the Chicago River, the Lake Michigan, and the pond at Lovelace. And our partner agency, MWRD, our city departments, and our residents do a wonderful job of maintaining these spaces as green and natural habitats, of making sure that there's public access that is maintained. And so Evanston really does very well in this area. The fourth one is water pollution prevention. And here's where we see those those gray areas that belong to the MWRD. However, Evanston has some really good strengths. We have a fantastic beach maintenance program, which of course is operated uh, more by Parks and Rec and Public Works and the Health Department for our swimming season. We have a very innovative salt management plan that helps us minimize the amount of salt that we used for the snow season. These sound like miscellaneous initiatives, but they're actually really critical to protecting our source water quality. And so we are fortunate to have so many departments working to preserve source water in Evanston. Where we are um, really seeing some improvements is that we are trying to figure out ways to get storm water to infiltrate into the ground where it falls rather than see it go into the sewer system. And so where we have initiatives like green, uh, complete and green streets, those are really important for that and being able to move forward. Principle five, water protection planning. We have so many initiatives that really form a network, whether it's Evanston Climate Action Plan, complete and green streets, the stormwater control ordinance, the green building ordinance, these are really critical to promoting the sustainable land development practices that are so important to preserving our natural environment and our water quality. And so we do very well in terms of scoring ourselves. Now, what we're seeing as challenges is that uh, there's a ramp up in stormwater requirements that's going on right now. The Metropolitan Water Reclamation District uh, last year adopted the watershed management ordinance and that includes additional stormwater requirements for developers and construction that Evanston is subject to. Also we're seeing the Environmental Protection Agency is really encouraging us to ramp up our stormwater initiatives and so what we are doing is that staff and a, a number of departments are sort of working together to incorporate all of this outside pressure into Evanston's construction and development policies. Principle six is water preparedness for climate change. In terms of our strength, Evanston is a real leader in greenhouse gas reduction. I think this council is familiar with that. Uh, we have done energy audits at city facilities and reduced our energy use. We have entered into long-term contracts for 100% green energy for both city facilities and for residential through the municipal aggregation program. So in this respect, we are really doing wonderfully. In terms of our challenges, this is where we have our, our red indicators. Um, we are able to respond to individual extreme events that are commonly attributed to climate change, but we have not done an assessment and come up with a plan and figured out how to adapt our emergency operations in advance. And so this fall, we are entering into a partnership with the University of Michigan to conduct that vulnerability assessment for climate change. And from there, we'll start to move forward on doing the preparedness planning and the operations that we need to as we move forward to an interesting, exciting times in the future. So in summary, we perform very well in most areas. This is really due to a 
a large number of city departments working together with our partner agencies and the residents of Evanston, so Public Works, Health Department, Sustainability Office, uh, Parks and Rec, these, these all have programs that really make a huge difference in our ability to sustainably manage our, our water supply. We did find a couple of areas of improvement in the true cost pricing and preparing for climate change, but we have steps in place to try to deal with those. And if we were to do this again next year, I would expect that we would see some of these indicators improve over time. And I would invite all the residents and the aldermen to take the opportunity to review the complete report posted on the website that really goes through each milestone and has the data and explains why we scored the way we did in each milestone. But that's pretty much it. If there are any questions, I would be happy to answer them at this time. I see. Mm -hmm. Alderman Rainey. Can you give us any idea of the impact the changes for will have on development? The changes for development are similar to what you see in the stormwater control ordinance in that we have requirements for detention. But that, you said it's going to increase. But the ramp up is in the construction phase. Right now, we are really only beginning to enforce on contractors that they have to have erosion control measures in place during construction. So for example, they cannot track mud all over the city streets because that mud ends up in the sewer system when it I'll rains. Tell you that's something that we should also do. Have our street sweepers um, eliminating water as they sweep because a street sweeper going down your street can frequently cause your car to be covered with mud your, or dirt, dust, your windows to be covered with dust, et cetera. I know that's <laughs> not quite what you're talking about, but it... You know, I agree with you about the mud in the streets. That yeah, you know, to keep the dirt and on the other site. things dripping out. Yes, you know, to keep dirt on the site, to keep it off the streets, uh, where you have big piles of dirt, have tarps over them if they're going to be there for two months so that the have wind doesn't blow problems? dust everywhere. Have we had problems with contractors? Uh, we have had problems, and we have enforced it on a policy basis, not on an ordinance basis, where we've gone in and we have said, you have to put in a gravel driveway to your site and you have to put in a truck washout area so that you're not doing that on the city street. But we need to firm those requirements up and ultimately we'll bring that back as an ordinance for discussion and hopefully approval. Hopefully we'll have a lot of development. <coughs> where we can apply these indicators. That would be wonderful. It would, it would be. Alderman Grover? I think it's, it's good that we do so well on this scorecard, in, ex except for one or two areas, two areas it looks mm -hmm. like. And um, I, I keep thinking back to uh, Commissioner Deborah Shore's presentation to us a couple years ago on, on how to incorporate at every opportunity permeable pavement, permeable surfaces, and uh, to think twice every time we grant a variance for uh, larger lot coverage because all of that runoff, if you got a building on a lot, it's running off into our combined storm sewer and not being replenished into the, the Great Lakes water basin. And uh, so we really do have to keep in mind that, you know, uh, increasing lot coverage by granting a variance has effect on what we're able to do to manage our storm water and Great Lakes sustainability. Okay. I see no more lights. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. All right. Alderman um, Burris, back yes. to you. I ask you to move A10, resolution 74-R-14, authorizing the mayor to enter into a restated employment contract with city manager Wally Bobkowitz. Details of this contract can be found online in the council packet. A second? It's been moved and second. Uh, Alderman Grover. I can just say that uh, that our proposed contract tonight uh, comes to us following uh, uh, what our annual review and evaluation of our city manager and long discussion. And what we incorporated this year was was uh, asking input from others into the process. And I think it made for a really robust and constructive evaluation and review. And um, in five years, I think it's safe to say, I, I mean, I'll still say that 
voting to approve Wally's first contract was the best vote I ever cast, and I'm thinking of uh, voting to approve the second contract, um, keeping here a little, him here a little longer, we hope, will be the second best vote I ever cast. So um, we have come a long way in five years, and I credit a lot of our progress in Evanston and the good stuff that we've done, been able to do here with uh, Wally's leadership. So I'm a, I'm a yes on this. Absolutely. Alderman. Wondering which way you're going to go. Yeah. <laughs> Alderman Burris. Uh, I would like to echo uh, Alderman Gurr's comments, and thank you, Wally, for sticking with us for a little little while longer. It's, it's a journey, definitely. Okay. Alderman Rainey. Um, when he first came, we had a planning meeting, a visioning session, and we decided um, making Evanston the most livable city would be mm -hmm. our, our, I don't know, motto or our, our statement or our goal. And since that time, and I don't remember ever in my history here, have we ever gotten first place, second place, fifth place, 20th place in anything. I, I could be wrong, I could be blocking on it, but since you've been here, Wally, we have gotten more awards, not only because of you, but because the people you've chosen have, have helped us, but that is because of your leadership. You chose those people, and we've all, um, We've all just uh, benefited so greatly, and that's very much appreciated, not just by the council, but I think by the community as well. Thank you. Okay. Alan Grover, you had your light on again? Yeah. Uh, just to comment upon the, the process itself, which I thought was uh, very professional and, and reflecting upon uh, the level of professionalism that Wally brings to the job, as well as all the staff that he has hired in these last five years. So. Um, Anyway, mm -hmm. well, I'll say ditto to all of that. Um, it, I, I do want to comment on the evaluation process because it was it was new to us this year. We did make a change, and I thought the change was for uh, the better, including um, other um, staff involved in that. And uh, I think it was Alderman Grover who said, "It five years we could." So to do the 360, our version of the 360 evaluation, and we did that. So I'm very proud of that and the input that we received from other staff and also our conversation with Wally um, to reach the decisions that we made. Alderman Rainey. Well, also, I'm very proud that I supported appointing the same evaluation committee, and that was <laughs> Alderman Holmes, Alderman Grover, and Alderman Wynn, who did a wonderful job. It is not easy. It is absolutely not an easy task to be on that subcommittee. And I appreciate all your work, committee, subcommittee. Mm -hmm. And um, having been on it in the past, I, I do not care to be on it again. <laughs> and you all did it better than anybody. So congratulations to you too. Thank you. It, okay. it's, it sometimes can be tedious. Yes, and it can long be. And, and it's very involved, time consuming. Okay. So it has been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, A11. Oh, this is interesting. Um, resolution 76R14. Our mayor has requested. Uh, that we support comments on the proposed rulemaking on rail tank car safety. Um, it's a result of, this is a response to a request made by Barrington President Karen Darch um, at the uh, Northwest Municipal Conference Board meeting. I move approval. Second. To support. I'll, okay, Alderman Grover. And, and also to support our mayor, who is the current president of Northwest Municipal Conference, I would hope that she could bring back uh, her own city council's uh, support of those resolutions and those initiatives of the Northwest Municipal Conference as its president. Absolutely. It's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Alderman Grover. Resolution 65R14 authorizes the city manager to enter into an agreement with, uh, should we do these all together? Or just yeah, one? Okay, with it. three new tenants for the Noise Cultural Arts Center, et cetera, music school. Separately, all right. I'll move, I'll move A12, which is uh, lease with et cetera, music school. 
for three months. Well, go ahead. Three months lease. Second. Okay. I want, we'll, we can vote on March. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll move uh, resolution 66 R14, which is the lease for space at the Noise Cultural Arts Center with Osgi Samanchi and Shirley Adams. Oh, I know Shirley. For Second. a three month lease. Second. Okay. And the third is a lease with Roberta Levin for space at the Noise Cultural Arts Center, again for three months. Second. So that's A12, A13, and A14. Okay, it's been moved and second. I don't see any lights. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, I need to go back to A9 because I guess we moved in second, but we did not actually vote um, on uh, resolution 72-R-14. I, I don't think we even moved it. We didn't move it? I thought I moved it. Oh, okay. nobody second? Oh, okay. Uh, it's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? You're absolutely right because I was going to get back to it. Thank you. All right. Um, moving on to A15, Ordinance 109-0-14, adding Title III, Chapter 31, regarding transportation network providers. Uh, city, count, city staff recommend City Council consideration of Ordinance 109-0-14, which regulates transportation network providers to mandate certain standards, requirements, and consumer protection of such providers. Second. Um, second. It's been moved and second. Alderman Grover. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like, as, as part of our discussion of the regulation of the ride share, which are the transportation yes. network providers, really explore whether it makes sense to, instead of regulating the ride share, to deregulate our taxi cabs in Evanston and, and understand what that might be, what the implications would be, would there be repercussions. Um, I'm, I'm looking to increase both competition and the quality of, of ride share or taxi cab service in Evanston for Evanston residents. And I don't know if by regulating both we achieve that end or by deregulating taxi cabs we achieve both fairness in our regulation and, uh, and, and achieve the ends of safe, reliable um, ride share taxi service for Evanston residents. And I'm kind of asking the committee here what you would think about that. and. And uh, do we need maybe more information about what the implications would be? I think it might be tough to do, given that Chicago's already gone down the road of regulation. Maybe there's a, a regulation light that might even the playing field. Um, maybe there's a way of suspending regulation of cabs for a while to see yeah. what happens. I don't know. I got all of them. Burris, you want to? Um, what do you think? Actually, I was having a conversation today with um, Alderman Wilson about this. I think we do need more information of what, what does that look like? Have there other communities done this? I have issues with some of the taxi cab drivers as it is now. We are regulating them. And so I would like more information to look, would, to look at this. Would competition get us what we're looking for? And yeah. Right, and, and well, at the, the same time, safety. Right. The right. are upset about competition. They don't want it. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and for me, it's all about the safety factor of that when you're getting into a cab that you have some level of confidence that you're going to be with a driver that has the proper licensing. Similar to going, going to a restaurant, you have the knowledge that they're licensed, they most likely aren't going to poison you. I mean, so it's that kind of thing that I think that safety absolutely something we should look at. Grant, are you peaked over there? Are you like, you're, uh, anything to say? <laughs> Madam Chair, members of the committee, Grant for our Corporation Council. Uh, with respect to the uh, proposed ordinance that's before you tonight, we certainly uh, did our level best to follow the charge of this committee and the council to prepare regulations relative to the ride sharing and transportation network providers. So uh, what we did do is uh, essentially take most of the Chicago language and, and transmute that into a city of Evanston uh, proposed ordinance. With respect to the issue, uh, the policy issues that are being brought to bear by uh, the committee relative to cab regulation, um, we, we are not exactly prepared to, to get into that. Um, I will, however, say that the regulations with respect to cabs 
have remained substantively unchanged since the late 80s, early 90s. Mm -hmm. um, so there may be um, policy issues that this committee and this council may wish to broach and revisit since there have been no substantive amendments there for quite some time. Okay, thank you. Alderman Rainey and then Alderman Grover. Well, I don't know that much about the cab in industry, but I do know that taxis, um, licensed taxis have far more privileges than a rideshare car. Mm -hmm. For example, at O'Hare, or, or the airports. Uber cannot operate there. They can take you there, but they can't come and pick you up yeah. there. So there, there are lots of uh, nuances here. And, you know, I, I know your, your uh, comments should be meaningful, but our taxis, like you said, are regulated, mm -hmm. and I've never felt more unsafe I, than being <laughs> in one of our cabs. But I use Uber all the time. And I, I mean, I sit in a nice clean cab with a, with a nice cab driver who is of every ethnic background. I, I must have been in 10 different cabs or um, Uber cars, and everybody's different. So it's, it's, it's you know, the variety and the diversity, and they're all alike. They're very nice. They're very polite. They know exactly where they're going. And if there are two different ways to get there, they'll ask you what you prefer. And I, you know, I've never felt uh, more confident of getting someplace than in an Uber car. So what is it that makes you feel unsafe? I mean, I, I well, when you say- Well, first of all, the cabs are very raggedy. Oh, the ones okay. that I've been in. Now, I've been in one or two nice ones mm -hmm. a while back, but crazy. I mean, there's, there's, and there's if we're regulating no them. reason to fear Uber. And the no, only I, thing to fear is competition, and that's, that's where the taxis are coming in. Well, I'm, well, I'm- And it's a fabulous employment program, fabulous. And I'm not arguing, I'm trying to figure out if, if we are regulating the cabs and they're raggedy, then what's wrong with us? That's I, what I'd like to know. Okay, so that, that's the question I think that we have to ask, because if that's what makes you feel unsafe, then no, we need the, to. The driving makes me feel unsafe. Yes, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why don't you talk to Alderman Wynn? So you have some good stories. Mm -hmm. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, uh, I, I think has been said there's probably several options here before you. Uh, we could come back and talk a little bit more about what other communities are doing. This is certainly uh, an issue that many communities around the country are, are facing. How, how should these businesses be regulated, not be regulated, to what extent, and then how does that interplay with our existing uh, taxi regulations? Certainly we have what's on the books. We have one staff member who spends, uh, what, approximately three quarters of his time, half of his time, uh, related to, to issues associated uh, with the licensing of taxi cabs in Evanston. We could come back and talk about more of, of what that process is and, and how that is delineated in the code. I guess my question to the committee, if, if that's your interest, what's the appropriate venue? Would you like uh, to have a special meeting of this committee to talk about that? Would you like us to gather up some additional information and bring it back to a regular meeting here in the next few weeks? Uh, there are probably pros and cons to each approach. I'm fine with a regular meeting. Uh, Alderman Grover? Uh, could we gather up some information and determine at that point whether it warrants a, a separate meeting for it? Sure. Uh, and the kind of information that I'd be interested in would be what are the costs associated for us with our regulation mm -hmm. taxi cabs? You suggest three quarters of a full time employee. And what are the what's the revenue that we get from our taxi cab licensing that we don't get structure from that we don't get from life sure. Uber? Um, are there ways that we could, well, you know, are there ways that we could ask the Uber drivers to contribute something to make up for the loss of revenue from our cab licensing, taxi licensing? Um, I just think it's a way of, I don't want to be behind the eight ball on this innovation if it's, if this is the way, you know, rideshare is going and, and. Madam Chair, Alderman Grover, I think what we are seeing is most communities are putting some form of rules and regulations to it. And I think the, the question for this council will be, what form? I mean, my, my, my sense is what I'm hearing is uh, perhaps not as much as we have with taxis, but then the question is should we be evaluating taxis? Should the the entire level of regulation be adjusted so that perhaps there's a level playing field I, um, yeah, uh, between, uh, mm -hmm. between providers? And then uh, what might that look like? Uh, we can come back with all those kinds of things. I think 
if, if my sense is what I'm hearing is that you want there to be some flexibility uh, to allow uh, taxis to continue to exist as they are in Evanston, but also to have this ride share exist, but to do it in a way where there's at least some protections of our residents. Again, that's been a, a fairly standard approach for other communities. So we can bring back more information and, and perhaps uh, look at the existing taxi ordinance uh, and perhaps offer some, um, some suggestions on how that would be done uh, to achieve those goals. Okay. Alan Moraney. Well, I don't understand how you're going to identify an Uber car. How are you, I mean, let, let's say you make regulations for Uber cars. A car that is totally unmarked pulls up, and I've, I've ridden in three Evanston Uber cars. I've asked all three of them, do you have a, have you paid the wheel tax? Because I won't get in it if you haven't. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm in it, and I've asked them, where do you live? I always ask them, where do you live? They live in Evanston. Three of them have. They all have paid the wheel tax. They all have insurance. You give them, you know, 20, whatever the amount is for your ride. How are, there's no meter in their car. Everything is done by smartphone. How are you going to know that the car that's picking me up is an Uber car and not my friend from down the street? Uh, Alderman Rainey, members of the committee, I think as we have done some initial research on this, um, that there has been uh, the, uh, the the willingness of these third-party companies to follow uh, or locally adopted ordinances. And so we appreciate their willingness to do that. They have done that in other communities around the country. Our sense is, is that they will do that here. Uh, I think the question then comes, uh, what's the definition of reasonable and if we were to come up with an ordinance that perhaps was outside of the framework that other communities around the country then perhaps that would be a different discussion uh, but my understanding is that these companies have been generally pretty flexible uh, with reasonable regulation and have provided information on a, a poor those local ordinances uh, in a reasonable way mr Farr, if, if you have seen anything that but you're not that. going to get the taxis to accept that. So there's always going to be the argument going on. So. And, and I think other communities and other city councils have said so be it. Mm -hmm. That that said have said so be it. So that the the, the, the value right. of right. having these 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 newer systems uh, outweigh any upset if the, the councils can come up with what they feel on behalf of their residents are fair regulations. So we can continue to go down that road. Uh, Mr. Farrar, is there anything I've said that you want to amplify or, or correct? With respect to the ordinance that we submitted, there are several affirmative obligations within that ordinance that go to the companies, the, the transportation network providers licensed by the city to provide information, to comply with requests for information, to make themselves known to, to the city for purposes of tracking. And I believe that through the application, there is a way of determining who is in the city at any one time. So we, we know that, that in the past couple of months, there's been approximately 10 Ubers at any one time operating on an on-off basis. So it's, it's somewhat easy to, to begin to track them, especially as they are interested in developing a market presence. And this is not such a new idea. I, in the early 60s, um, I lived on the south side of Chicago for a bit, and I, I'm trying to think of the name of what they called. You, you just go out and stand on the corner, and car would wouldn't be a cab. <laughs> Jitney, yeah. So I mean, it's really the same thing. It um, so you know everything comes back one way or another. So it's not so new, but out of that came, I believe, all the regulations for cabs, and so eventually people are going to want regulations. So I I think that. Um, Somebody will want to know, because something will happen, and then what? And, and Alderman Holmes, members of the committee, that's been, I think, the experience in other communities, that that uh, some form of regulation has, uh, has been welcomed by, by this industry. I think the question is, what are the parameters of that? So again, there are dozens of communities, you know, many communities with universities that mm -hmm. have gone through this, that are going through this. I think Ann Arbor, uh, Michigan, is their city councils having these discussions right now. Uh, Madison, Wisconsin, there are other members of the Big Ten where these companies are operating and these discussions have happened. So we're happy to, to bring back some additional information uh, and at a regular meeting, perhaps not your next meeting, maybe the meeting following that. And then after that discussion, if you wish to hold a special meeting or, or do something else, we'll be ready to help with that. Okay. Alderman Grover. That's okay. Is that okay? Mr. Farr, answer my 
Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, All right. Okay, so. Um, so is it the committee's desire? We'll just hold this. Hold, hold this. We'll this. hold this in. I hold it in committee. Yeah. Okay. And, cool. we'll, and we'll come back uh, within the next thirty days. Okay. Great. All right. Um, um, Burst, you want to take the last one? Yes. I uh, move A16, Ordinance 112-0-14, amending City Code Section 3-4-6 by creating the new Class S-1 liquor license, which creates a new subsection Class S-1 liquor license for nonprofit organizations who wish to obtain an annual liquor license. It's been moved to end second. Um, any comments, questions on here? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we need to go back to a um, 3.2. Um, Mr. City Manager, did you get a chance to look at it? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the committee, let me just walk through uh, the email. Um, Mr. Nagar, the city engineer is here, he'll help as well. Um, the, uh, the first uh, comment, uh, Mr. Vasilko made uh, was regarding uh, Lakota's proposal not including an MBE or WB only EBE. Uh, as I think you're all aware, uh, the requirement of our ordinance uh, uh, as, as long as, uh, as you provide uh, one. Uh, so uh, the EBE consultant certainly uh, matches with our, our, our ordinance. Um, this, the second piece regarding Lakota, a, a prior engagement regarding the downtown master plan. Uh, Ms. Niden, uh, I think, must have been on the Planning Commission at the time. I think uh, Alden Burris was as well. Uh, so Ms. Niden uh, shared with, with us uh, uh, what had occurred. I think there was some dissatisfaction. Uh, there was a principal in this firm uh, that was responsible for that uh, project who is no longer with that uh, firm. There were also instances, I think, of the city paying for work that had not been done. Uh, all that uh, we feel confident are in the past uh, with the Lakota group. They certainly are uh, well known in the area for, for doing this type of work. Uh, so I think any concerns that were raised uh, by Mr. V Vasilko uh, regarding uh, any prior uh, work with this firm, I think we feel comfortable that uh, the principles are changed and uh, quite honestly I think we'll have the ability to, to manage uh, the project uh, sufficiently. Um, the uh, the third piece, which I'll ask uh, uh, for Mr. Nagar's help regarding uh, the, the, the subs on this project, what this this project is is really uh, uh, as much of a technical evaluation of what's going on in our parks as far as the condition is concerned as anything. Uh, and there are uh, specialties that are required that we're asking uh, the Lakota group to take the information that's gathered by those specialties uh, to help analyze. So. The, the, the subcontractors, I'm, I guess I'm answering the question, aren't I? Uh, yeah. the, the, the subcontractors are meant to uh, be the ones that gather that information. Mr. Nagar. Good evening. Madam Chair and uh, members of the committee. I want to address this in two aspects. One is the technical aspect and another is the schedule. The parks means they have several technical aspects like the safety inspections of the playground, in addition to the landscape architecture, the field house inspections, and also how the parks are constructed. So there are several specialties in just the park evaluation. So we need a team that has the specialty in all different categories. In addition, this project has approximately eight weeks to complete all the field inspections. 70 plus um, parks has to be inspected within eight weeks. So we need pretty much the city has to be divided into one-third and one-third and one-third. So the teams should have a multi-prong approach to complete all the evaluations in each park. So unless we have a team that has all the expertise, you know, we cannot just have uh, one uh, firm doing all this within the time frame we have. So given the technical aspects of the various categories and specialties in the time frame, we feel that the team is a good team and they had uh, good presentation, they explained their approach and we feel pretty confident that uh, we will be able to come up with a good plan uh, for the CIP because with the dollars we are spending, we need to make sure that each park is identified in all deficiency and what needs to be done and how we plan it. Like what we do for the streets, that's how we come up with the plan, what we need to do. So similar to the parks, we need to make sure that we cover all the deficiency and go from there. So if there's any question, I'll be happy to try to answer. Are there any other questions? Okay, thank you. 
Um, okay, is there a motion to um, accept? Okay, and uh, second? Well, uh, what? Let's wait for Alderman Grover. No. <laughs> We didn't if you have any other questions on here? No. Okay. Um, it's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, I believe that completes our agenda. And um, the planning and development should meet at, I believe, 715. Uh, uh, motion for adjournment. Okay. We are adjourned.